welcome back again to another video so in this video we are doing an experiment to determine whether certain substances are electrolytes or not so remember electrolysis is the decomposition of an electrolyte right when we pass an electric current through it now for our experiment the decomposition if that is taking place right remember we will have the anode and the cathode so we need to see a reaction occurring at either of those electrodes so most likely what you are we are looking for is to see the production of bubbles around the electrodes right now for the source of our electric current we have a power supply right we have a piece of copper metal and a nail right so these are our electrodes right now when we put these in our solutions if the solution is an electrolyte something must occur we must see some form of visible reaction all right so the first solution we have is sodium chloride table salt right now from the theory we said that ionic compounds can conduct an electric current when molten or in solution so here we have a solution so we're going to see if it is able to to conduct an electric current right so i'm going to put it close and what you are going to look for again is the production of bu bubbles so pay attention to the nail and the copper metal as i put them in the solution so if you can see right i'm sure you can see it if you look at the nail inside you can see the fizzing occurring right so you see the formation of the bubbles it is clear to see let me bring it back a little all right so it's clear to see so once a reaction is taking place it means that the electrolyte is being decomposed all right that is why we are getting a reaction So we can say that sodium chloride is an electrolyte. Now before I put it this in the next solution, I'm going to rinse it off. And I will leave, I will leave you to determine why I would need to rinse it off in water. So sodium chloride is an electrolyte because we saw the production of bubbles where we have the zinc nail. All right. So next up now we have sucrose. So this is table sugar. Alright. So we are going to see if sucrose is an electrolyte. So again, all we need to see is the formation of bubbles. Alright. So place it inside. If you look at the nail there is nothing occurring let me put it even closer look there is nothing there is no bubbles being produced see that no re re no reaction is taking place so if no reaction is taking place what that means is that the electrolyte well the solution is not being decomposed right nothing is occurring 
So sucrose, which is table sugar, by our observation here, it is not an electrolyte. And you should know that sucrose is a covalent compound. And we should know with the covalent compounds, from the theory or your notes, you should know if covalent compounds are electrolytes. All right. So that's with the sucrose. So we know that table salt, that's an electrolyte. From our observation, the sucrose solution is not. Next up is hydrochloric acid. switch on wait was it switch on when i was doing this all right just to show you where it switched on now so let me just do back the sucrose just in case it was switched off right so again it switched on then nothing is occurring all right so not an electrolyte So up next now is hydrochloric acid. All right, so again, let's look for a reaction. Let's switch this on. And again, now if you notice, I think this is evident that I think this reaction is more vigorous than the sodium chloride. So you can watch, but you can skip back to the part with sodium chloride. And I think this is more vigorous. So in terms of the strength of the electrolyte, you can determine which one would be the stronger electrolyte. Because I think this one is obviously occurring much quicker. So the production of bubbles in this reaction is faster than the one with sodium chloride right? it wasn't this vigorous with sodium chloride right so that is with hydrochloric acid now if you are looking at the appearance of the copper metal uh, wait notice the top part of the metal that is not making any contact and look at the part that is making contact the difference in the appearance all right so moving on from the acid so that's hydrochloric acid so we know that is an electrolyte from observation so next in line we have we have sodium hydroxide So again, let us look if we are getting any bubbles being produced. So let's switch this on. All right, again. If you see, notice this one, we have bu bubbles being produced at both the 
anode and the cathode all right so i think you're able to see yes both of them all right so what this is saying again electrolysis is taking place the power supply is the source of the electric current as it is passing through this solution we have the decomposition of it right remember from part one i did the video on electrolysis to explain what actually occurs so you can watch back that video if you need to all right so we can see that sodium hydroxide is also an electrolyte so the magic said solution. An alternate experiment we could do these solutions that are electrolyte. I might do it in the next video. Especially which one of them will make a bulb shine the brightest. But based on what we have seen here, the sodium hydroxide and HCl that we have used, they have produced a lot of bubbles very quickly, which would be an indication of the strength. But in the next video, we could use a light bulb and connect it up to the solutions and not the power supply. All right, so now we are moving on. This is vinegar. Now, this should be interesting. Vinegar is a weak acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Let's see if the reaction is as vigorous with sodium hydroxide and HCl as with vinegar. Oh, let me switch it on. All right. No. So you see that? So we don't have to use the bulb to know that the brightness of the bulb. If you look at this reaction, the bubbles are not being produced as fast as it was being produced with the hydrochloric acid or the sodium hydroxide, which would indicate that those are stronger electrolytes than the vinegar. So vinegar is a weak acid, right? Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, and so you should be able to determine why the this vinegar the reaction is occurring slower than the hydrochloric acid or the sodium hydroxide so we know that sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali and hydrochloric acid is a strong acid And the last, the last one we're going to look at is cooking oil. So here I have some cooking oil. Uh -uh. All right, switch this on. Wait. Wait, before I do that, let me get back this sodium hydroxide, switch it off. I'm going to put the copper where at the black and the nail now is on the red. All right. Let's see if anything happens. 
all right oh hold on it's turned off so let me turn it on okay So it's still occurring, not the way what I wanted. It occurs still. All right, let's move to the cooking oil. Alright, so the last one, the cooking oil. Alright, switch it on. Let's see. As you can see, no reaction. Alright. Nothing is happening with the nail. So that means the oil is not an electrolyte. Alright, so that's it. So this experiment was just highlighting some substances that are electrolytes and some that are not. So from the theory, we would have said that ionic compounds, so salts, would have been electrolytes when they are molten or in solution. Here we have it in solution. We said that strong acids are strong electrolytes, weak acids are weak electrolytes, and we saw that the reaction with hydrochloric acid was much more vigorous than with the vinegar, which contains ethanoic acid, which is a weak acid. Right, and yes, that was it. And we also use sodium hydroxide which is an alkali, right? So we showed that acids, bases, salts, the solution of them, all of them are electrolytes. Cooking oil and sucrose, which are covalent compounds, are not electrolytes, right? So that's it for this video.